Welcome back to another 100% completion video. This time, we worked the border of Arstotska and stamped our way through the 13 achievements of Papers, Please. I'd never seen or heard of this game before, but after a friend recommended it and then gifted it to me, here we are. From reuniting a mother and son to stopping a plot to overthrow the government, this game was actually very fun and interesting and is well deserving of its overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. As we start the game, we find out that our name was pulled during the October Labor Lottery. We are sent for immediate placement at the Greston border checkpoint in Arstatska, and the government was gracious enough to provide us with a class 8 apartment. Our first day on the border objective is simple, only let Arstatskan citizens through. As the game progresses, the rules get more complicated, but at least for the first day, it's nice and simple. After completing each day, the end of day screen shows us how much money that we've made. It is here that we have to decide how to allocate it. We have to pay rent, feed our family, and heat the apartment. If we fail to pay for food and heat, then the family members start getting sick and we have to start paying for medicine. Leave them sick long enough and they die. This is where the real difficulty of the game lies. We'll revisit this later, just keep it in mind. Before we go any further, we need to talk about the lovable character Georgie. Throughout the game, we run into Georgie who really wants to come to Arstatska. The first time we meet him, he shows up with no passport and we have to turn him away. Before he left, Georgie told me that only 10% of viewers are subscribed to the channel. If you're enjoying this video and want to cross the border, then smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. These videos are recorded live, so check the video description for links to my live streams so you can be a part of the journey. Alright, let's get back to the video. The next time we meet Georgie, he shows up with a passport, although it looks like he made it himself and we quickly deny him. But Georgie, being the happy guy that he is, just accepts it and tells us that he'll be back with a better one. Georgie returns this time with a valid looking passport. However, the rules have changed and all foreigners require an entry permit, which he did not have. So once again, I had to deny him. He once again happily accepts the denial and tells us that we are running a strict border and that is good. He'll go and get an entry permit and come back. A few days pass by and Georgie returns once again. He has his passport and an entry ticket. The only problem is that the entry ticket was an old form that was required. He needed an entry permit, which has more detailed information. Once again, the poor guy is denied and leaves to fetch the curse correct papers. It's at this point that Georgie is really starting to grow on me, and I really want to see him return with all the right papers to let him through into our Stotska. Remember earlier when I talked about managing our money to feed our family and keep them healthy? Well, I didn't do a very good job of that, and at the end of day 10, my son and uncle were already dead, while my wife and mother-in-law were cold, sick, and hungry. I decided to see what would happen if I didn't feed them or give them medicine and let them die. We discovered that our Stotska doesn't appreciate this, and they want us to support a large and healthy family, and we end up losing. Since we lost, and now have a better understanding of the game, I decided to restart from the beginning and hopefully make more money to keep my family alive. After starting our second run, we reach day 3 and we run into Georgie again with his fake passport. This time, we're feeling generous and just decide to let the guy in. This act of kindness unlocks our first achievement and earns us the Abristan token. On day 4, a woman arrives wanting to see her son. She has a mistake on her papers, but we want to reunite them to earn our second achievement and the import token. Day 5 comes around and a man from Antegria shows up with all the correct papers. He tells us that his wife is next in line and asks that you be nice to her. She doesn't have the required entry permit, but we don't want her to be apart from her husband, so we let her through and earn our third achievement and the Antegria token. On day 12, a man arrives looking to hire some more engineers for his team and leaves us four cards that we need to give to those with engineer on their work permits. After we have given all four cards, the man returns on day 14, earning us the fourth achievement and the Arstatska token. On day 21, another man arrives and tells us that there is very little time and that he will come back in three days with the correct papers. He asks that we let him through and he will leave his watch as collateral. Before his return, multiple people offered to buy the watch and at this point, I could really use that money to take care of my family, but I refuse their offers. Three days later, the man shows back up with the correct papers and I return his watch, earning the fifth achievement and the Republia token. Now is a great time to talk to you about Isaac. They are a group of people that are looking to overthrow the Arstatskan government and throughout the game, they give you tasks you can either choose to complete or ignore. They also offer you a lot of money to complete these tasks. Now that you know about Isaac, we can move on. On day 23, an Isaac agent shows up and informs us that we need to kill the man in red standing in line. They will provide a distraction to afford me the opportunity. Eventually, a man jumps the fence and we have to make a choice. Shoot him 
or shoot the man in red. We decide to shoot the man in red and let the board of security handle the fence jumper. This earns us the sixth achievement, hired gun. However, this also causes us to get arrested for murder and we have to start from a previous day. We decide to restart day 23 and this time we don't shoot the man in red and instead take out the man that jumped the fence. On day 25, a man arrives and leaves a love note to try and make us approve his entry into the country. We don't let his charm steer us from our duty and deny him. A few moments later, another man seeking entry seems a little down, so we give him the note to cheer him up. This earns us our seventh achievement and the Kalechia token. So at this point, things start to get crazy at the border, and after multiple assaults on day 27, I'm told to confiscate all our Stotskin passports. My passport was also taken from me and my family. On day 29, an inspector from the Ministry of Information stops by to inform me that I will be undergoing an audit soon and that any involvement with unauthorized groups referring to Isaac is grounds for arrest. Our buddy Georgie shows up and tells us that he read the paper and that things are getting a little crazy in our Stotska. He thinks we should go away for a bit and gives us information for a guy that can help us out. In order to escape, we need to supply the dude with real passports so he can make fake ones for me and my family. At this point, everyone but my mother-in-law was dead, so I gather two passports at the end of day 30, choose to leave, earning our eighth achievement, Snowier Pastures. Now once again, we reload from an earlier save. This time, I just choose the previous day. On this day, a man arrives with a picture of his dead daughter and informs us that a man named Simon Wells, who killed his daughter, will come through. The man wants me to let him into our Stotska, but not before confiscating his passport. He will then return to get the passport from him so he can track Simon down. Sure enough, Simon shows up, I confiscate his passport and let him through. The next day, the man returns and I give him the passport and allow him passage through the border to get his vengeance. This earns us our ninth achievement and the United Federation token. Now we've only got four achievements left. We restart on day 12 to meet the first Isaac agent who gives us a bunch of papers with a code and decoder. We must give these to the Ministry of Information Inspector for our 10th achievement, Too Honest. For our 11th achievement, we restart on day 30 and at the end of the day, sleep again and earn glory to our Stotska for not doing any Isaac tasks or accepting any money from them. For this next achievement, we restarted on an earlier day in order to get as much money as possible to upgrade to a class five apartment. We managed to upgrade to the class 5 apartment at the end of day 23, earning us the worker's best achievement. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the final achievement of the game. This required us to restart one last time and complete every task given to us by the Isaac agent. These tasks were to allow Mikhail Saratov through on day 11, allow Stefani Greer through on day 14, allow Mary Ascali through on day 17, poison Khaled Istom on day 20, and confiscate Cordon Callow's passport, let him through, and then give the passport to the Isaac agent, let them through as well on day 27. All of these efforts from Isaac would culminate in an attack on the border on day 31, where we would just sit back and watch it happen, earning us the Member of the Order achievement. That's it. That was the final achievement. I have to say again that I was pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed this game. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it and want to see more achievement hunting, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and ring that notification bell. If you have game suggestions, feel free to leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see in the future. A big shout out to DITF Ninja for being a silver tier Discord supporter. If you want to support this content yourself, join my Discord and subscribe to one of the three tiers to watch videos early, get access to special Discord channels, and get a special Discord role. And you get your name shown at the end of all my videos. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.